Greetings. I'm your host, Glenn Alex, and this is The Glenn Alex Show, the 2023 Positive Change Podcast Award winner in health and wellness and finalist in psychology. Each episode of The Glenn Alex Show focuses on a different aspect of health because I believe in total health. You are whole and all of you matter. And I am on a mission to help you be joyful, connected, confident, and complete. The life experience I call wealth, W-E-L-L-T-H, which is health, the Southern riches. Please consider that those living in total health or even in pursuit of it have no need to oppress, control, or diminish anyone else. So please join us on this journey so we can make the world safe and loving for all human beings. For more information about my work, please visit glennalex.com and stay tuned for this enlightening episode on people pleasing with the Nope Coach. Suzanne Kohlberg is a compassionate boundary coach who helps you navigate your journey to self-care and fulfillment. She's here to help you break the cycle of putting yourself last and instead build the confidence, the confidence to set and maintain healthy boundaries. Suzanne is on a mission to not only help women set boundaries for themselves, but also to make boundaries normal. She believes we should be saying no more often. Suzanne holds certifications in neurolinguistic programming, sacred depths, fitness, and earned a bachelor's degree in medical science. Suzanne lives in Sydney, Australia with her husband and two children. When not coaching, podcasting, or writing, Suzanne enjoys reading, diamond dots, and yoga. Hi, Suzanne. Hello, thank you so much for having me. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for being here and for ma- navigating the time difference. It's fun living in the there. future, but the time zones can be a bit dicey. <laughs> yes, yes. You are in the future. That's really, never thought of it that way. Okay, well, I'll catch up with you one day. Before we get into to any anything specific, please tell us, how you became the note coach. It's a very long story, but in a nutshell, they say you teach what you most need to learn so that you can learn it. I wasn't able to say no. I was basically a doormat. People often call people pleasers a doormat, but I was more the exploding doormat. Like I would say yes, but that little seed of resentment would be there until eventually it would erupt in like, after all I've done for you. And I'm sure many people can relate to that. And yeah, it wasn't healthy. It wasn't sustainable. It wasn't good for me or my family or basically anyone. And so I, since I went on a journey, it sounds so cliche. I went on a journey, but I did a lot of work on myself and and setting boundaries for myself and saying no to things that didn't feel aligned. And people were asking me, hey, like, how do you do this? And the Nope Coach was born from, you know, people asking and being like, yeah, okay, actually I can teach this. So that's it in a nutshell. Okay. Okay. Well, even if it does sound cliche that I went on a journey and I started that way, that's the the truth of (laughs) health. It starts with the journey towards on that path. So what was the um, triggering event to initiate your path? 
It's funny you should ask that. A lot of people ask me that and I wouldn't say there's one. Like, you know how sometimes people can have that straw that broke the camel's back moment? Yes. It was like I was drunk driving and I had a near miss or I they found a spot and it could have been a cancer or like they have that. I didn't, I didn't have that. It was more lots of little ones. But the one that stood out for me, which is on, on my website, because my business coach person really grilled me until we could come up with one. But I just want to align for anyone listening. It wasn't just that one. It wasn't like this was the pivotal moment and then the skies opened and whatever. Because I think okay. a lot of people are waiting for that. Like they're like, yo, I'm waiting for my moment. And I think we get lots of nudges, inklings, kind of signs that we can kind of dismiss so I just really want to say to people it wasn't just this one defining moment and then I burst from the stalls and changed my life (laughs) it was more this one was a really potent one so basically what had happened is I I had a young child less than one year old I met another lady at mum's group who didn't have a vehicle so I would see her at the supermarket pushing her pram, trolley, stroller, wherever you are in the world, what you call it, and getting on the bus with her little bags of groceries and navigating that. And I was just like, that must be so challenging. And I think this is really important. People pleasers, we often don't identify as people pleasers. We're like, we're just kind and generous. Yes. So I said to her, hey, we're going to the supermarket at the same time. Would you like me to pick you up and and bring you? And she's like, oh, that'd be amazing. So once a week, I met this woman, I picked her up at her house, we went to the supermarket, we get our groceries, she'd tie her bags off, I'd leave mine open. So when we opened the boot, well, you guys call it a trunk, <laughs> we'd know whose was whose. It was great. What began to happen over a period of time is she would message midweek and go, oh, I've run out of bread or milk or nappies. Do you mind running me to the shop? Oh, we call the supermarket here a shop. <laughs> I've got okay. to translate Australianism <laughs> for you guys. And I was like, yeah, there's no worries. And honestly, that wasn't. But once a week became twice a week, became every other day, became, hey, my in-laws are visiting from interstate. Do you mind going to the airport to pick them up? Oh, my goodness. And you might listen to this and think, oh, that's not so bad. The airport was over an hour from my house. So, and then her son had the birthday party. Our children were turning one at a park. And she's like, can you can you drive all the stuff down to the park, like the picnic blanket, the cutlery, the crockery? And then she's like, oh, but I don't have enough. Can I borrow yours? And then she just kind of chuffed off afterwards. So I'm left with all this washing up and packing up. And so it was it was becoming a lot. And in the back of my mind, there was a couple of moments where I was like feeling that seed of resentment. I wasn't at the full of <sighs> moment, but I was just like, this is becoming a lot. But I never once said no. I never once spoke any of this. I kept it all quiet. And then one day we went to a mum's group meeting with a whole bunch of other mums and they had like a public toilet block and I was in a stall in this toilet and they're at the sink, this lady and another woman, and this woman said to her, hey, would you like to come to something or other? I can't remember the event. That's not important. And then she's like, oh, I remember you don't have a car, so, yeah, don't worry about it. And she's like, oh, no, I'd love to come. Suzanne will take me. She's my little bitch. And I remember just I was in the stall and my chest hurt and I felt like the rash of despair and like really all the emotions at once. And they say the truth hurts. Like we've all heard that saying. Yes. It does. Like the sting of that, it felt like a physical slap. Like I don't think I could have had more pain if she had physically hit me. I don't know, but it felt like a physical thing. Like I am, (laughs) I am. And And yeah, and to be so callous and unappreciated and unassuming and all the things that I'd never said came into my head, like you never offered petrol money, gas money, whatever you want to call it. You never, um, you never really said thank you. You just assumed like all, it was just a whirlwind. And yeah, from there, I was like, something's got to change. Okay. Okay. Well, and in that story, um, you, you there's a clear escalation of demands and disrespect from the person you were helping, and i I work with I, I work with boundaries a lot with my clients. I work with adults who are experiencing depression and anxiety, and they 
will often overlook that escalation. And like you said, there are nudges and signs along the way that it's important for us to start paying attention to. So how do you work with your clients to start um, identifying what their boundary issues are and and what's the first step in in changing that? People often ask me if I have a blueprint or a framework or or something, and I don't, not because there aren't common things, but because it's mm-hmm. going to be very unique to the individual also culturally what the relation like what your what is good for you for other people would be like I'm wholly unavailable for that but in general first step when I'm working with people is talking to them is listening to their stories is having them share and then asking is this is this what you'd like because sometimes we just get ourselves into situations like if someone had said to me and, and this I, I love how you brought the escalation of this. If this lady had gone from once a week taking her to the supermarket to every other day running to the airport, organising a birthday party, whatever, of course it would have been, no. (laughs) That's too much. But it doesn't happen like that. Often it, it happens like this, one extra thing, one extra thing, and people are like, oh, you don't mind. You did it last time. It'll be just this once. And you kind of think, oh, yeah, all right, and, and you kind of get swept along. So it's people having doing some sort of inventory of what's happening right now and what they'd like instead. And often people don't know what they would like because they just know what they don't like. So what kind of things would you like to stop? Like I don't want my sister to bring me and emotionally dump on me. Like I want her to ask, say, are you available to hear this today or or am I even the right person for this because I think sometimes we inadvertently become the unpaid sounding board like I wouldn't say therapist I don't want to you know but become somebody's everything and it's not in service to either of us but we don't want to interrupt them because like you know they need this thing but we also it's not helping the relationship or we might have our own stuff going on and I think sometimes we're not mindful of that like I, I teach people in the very beginning to communicate before anyone starts on their vent, emotional dump or whatever, are you able to listen to this today? Yeah. And that can be so hard but it's so rewarding because then people will be like, I actually have to take the other person's needs into consideration before I <laughs> let loose. Yes, yes. Well, I mean, I think it's great that you personalize your approach with clients Um we are unique individuals and have different needs and perspectives. And yet there is still a, a common denominator to um, people pleasing and to unhealthy uh, uh, boundaries. So as you dive into that, is there a, what is the common denominator for you? That's a really great question. I think the biggest common denominator with the people I work with is they want people to like them. So if I say no, then potentially you won't like me. Mm-hmm. And that I think that's a myth because when we really unpack it, we can find that you actually people you like people more for their honesty. Yes. Um, and the second part is they want to avoid confrontation at all costs um, because maybe in the past I've had the experience where speaking up for themselves has been seen as a confrontation. But when you really understand it, if someone says, hey, can you do this, and you say no, they can ask someone else. Like if they're if they're hanging off a cliff and they're holding on for dear life, can you help me? Of course. Like don't be like, oh, you'll right. find someone else. Right. But you know, can you pick my parents in law from the airport? Not this week. I'm not available. You know, they could ask someone else. They could hire a taxi. They could look at public yes. transport. They could get an Uber. Do you know what I mean? Like a lot of these yes. situations aren't the literal life and death. Oh my gosh, I'm leaving. So I'm abandoning someone. They're just like. They might be put out a bit, but when you're putting yourself out to accommodate them, that's when it becomes unhealthy. Especially when they can handle it themselves, when they are capable of solving their own problems. Yes. hundred percent. And, and I find too, that there's massive inappropriate guilt for not being able to um, do for others what they can do for themselves. 
people can people can get nasty. Not always. Sometimes they can. Uh, I think when I was chatting with you earlier, I can't remember before we recorded, but maybe <laughs> I didn't. So my sister lives in another state, like my whole family does. We live in Sydney. Our family's from Tasmania, that little island down the bottom. Okay. And she came to visit us. She loves the netball. She's like absolute netball mad. And her, she was bringing her daughter who lives in Canberra. So she had a car and they were going to drive from here to the netball. It's about 45 minutes. And I said, make sure you book parking. Like Sydney is not like Tasmania. If you don't pre-book parking, you're in trouble. Okay. And they're like, yeah, yeah, sure. On the day, I was like, so did you pre-book the parking? And they're like, no. And I'm like, you will not get a park. Oh, it will be fine. And I'm like, seriously, call. Anyway, long story short, they called. There was no parking. And they're like, can you drop me off? I was like, no, I cannot. <laughs> oh, but, you know, you work for yourself. Like, you can just, you know, rearrange your day and whatever. Oh, I'm my God. I'm driving 45 minutes out of my way to drop you at netball when I told you <laughs> to pre-book the parking. Yes. I'll drop you at the train station. That's like five minutes from my house. And any, uh, um, what's that show, Yellowstone fans in the house, not that kind of train station. Do you know Yellowstone, the TV show? I don't watch it now. The train station's code for you're going to push him off a cliff. <laughs> not that. The actual train station. Like, I'll drop you at the train station. Um, it's, you know, about an hour on the train, uh, and then I can pick you up. It's like, well, I don't want to catch a train. And it's like, and okay. this is my problem, how? And she right. kind of got a little bit stroppy with me. She's like, but you you work from home. I'm like, yeah, I'm working. Right. I don't, you know, I'm not putting my work day on hold to take you to an event, to sit around for two hours while you're watching the netball, to drive home. It's not my problem. If you don't want to catch a train, catch an Uber, catch a taxi. I don't want to pay for that. Once again, I love you. Not my issue. Right. <laughs> right. So do you find that in in um, throwing up your own boundaries and in working with with clients that um, there's that initial initial pushback and resistance? Do their loved ones tend to catch on, though, and adjust a- appropriately? Yeah. When I work with people, I really encourage them when you start setting your boundaries, set them with people who don't yet know you because they don't know any other version of you. So, okay. you know, new people coming into your life, it's so easy because they're just like, oh, this this is how she does things. Okay. And then they can choose to select in or select out. When it's family and loved ones, it's different because they're used to the you who would drop everything and drive you to the netball and sit in the car reading a book and then wait for you with ice cream. And, you know, and when it's like, oh, wow, you've <laughs> changed. I hear that a lot. Well, I used to, not so much. I've been doing this a while. You've changed. And I, I used to get kind of hurt by that or stung. And now I'm like, no, I've just become even more me because I never wanted to do these things. I was just being okay. nice. Right. Or, you know, but if I had nothing on, it'd be different. Like if I had nothing on that day, sure, I don't mind. But, you know, to ask people to stop doing what they're doing and even if it's not work, what if my plan was to read a book, but I was really looking forward to it. Kids are at school. Right. I've got my time. Like we don't have a lot of downtime because we're always looking after others. So right. to answer your question, strangers first, then family. And with family, often you'll need to gently remind them many times because people forget if you've spent years or decades being this one way and mm-hmm. then suddenly like, oh, this is how we do things. They're right. not out to get you. They're not nefarious. They're just forgotten. They're, and it's unfamiliar to them. Yes, it's new. It is new. My daughter's learning to roller skate right now. And the amount of falls she's taken in that first week, we're, on, we're in our second week now. She's so much better. But boundaries are like that too. They're clunky. They're awkward. They're a bit uncomfortable in the beginning. And okay. sometimes you'll be like psyching yourself up to say it because you're like, what are they going to respond? Most times people are pretty good. You don't get a lot of pushback. You think you will. But most times you don't. My sister gave me a bit of pushback then. And also, too, her voicing of, like, I don't want to catch a a train. It's not on me to solve or fix. Like, sometimes you can take that as, like, an attack. It's, like, it's just her voicing her thoughts. I'm going to catch a train. Oh, well, there's other things you can do. We can catch a taxi. Oh, I don't want to pay for that. I don't think anybody does. (laughs) But it doesn't mean that it's mine to fix, you know? Right, exactly, exactly. Um, Another translation, please. Yes. What What is netball? Oh, you guys don't know netball? So you know basketball know with the, the you know basketball, the sport where you dribble? Uh-huh. Netball is like basketball, except they don't dribble the ball, they just throw and catch. It's a sport. Oh, so you can't put the ball on the floor? No. There's seven players instead of five. I think basketball okay. has five. Five. And yes. you're not allowed all over the court. You have different areas where you have to, depending on the position that you play. 
Oh, and interesting. they throw and catch. And as soon as you catch, you can't move. If you move, that's called traveling and the ball goes to the other team. So it's absolutely horrific on people's knees because you're running really fast and then you catch the ball and you've got to stop still. So, Okay. um, yeah, it's, it's amazing sport to watch, but it can be really bad on the knees. Okay. I'll have to YouTube that and check it out because I'd never heard that term before. The Australian Okay. team is the Diamonds. It's like one of the best teams in the world. And my sister's obsessed, obsessed with them. <laughs> okay. Now you have um, uh, something also on your website where it's no to others and yes to self. Yes. Explain that. so if anyone listening if you're not driving or safe to do so if you can tear off a little piece of paper have you got a little piece of paper handy Glenn Alex you can do this too if you like Um, yes. and notice anyone's challenge to tearing something out it's always like oh my gosh I can't ruin it <laughs> scrap piece of paper preferably a square but it doesn't matter so much and on one side of the piece of paper write yes Okay. And then flip it over on the other side, write no. Okay. And say you had a plan. I actually want you to pick something indulgent because it's so much easier with work or something. But say you had a plan. It's the weekend. You're going to read a book. I'm like totally into reading right now, like a teenager. And someone comes over to you and says, hey, Glenn Alex, can you take me to this, the pharmacy to pick up my script? Now, if you hold that little piece of paper out to them to say yes, What are you saying to yourself? No. So No. this little piece of paper, it's so simple, but simple An effective. is not always simplistic. It's like when you say yes to others, what are you saying to you, especially if it's things that people want to do for their health, going to the gym, meditating, journaling, the things that are really for self, and someone can, ha can help me with my homework, kids are bickering, the neighbours, whatever it is, it's so easy to go, yeah, sure, and then you're saying no to you. So it's like when you say yes to yourself, you often do have to say no to others. Not no, not ever, just Right. no, not right Not now. not right now. Um, well, that brings up an interesting um, story for me is because there was like a 15, 20 year period where I worked six, seven days a week. And so I would take um, at least one Sunday a month and I called it Glenn Day, where I slept in. I ate when I wanted to. I watched whatever I wanted to. I still did some administrative work, but it was on my own time. And that was so relaxing and it was so calming for me that I often refused to do other things because I didn't want to give up my Glenn Day because I needed that downtime. So I think this is a very effective tool to use and to make it clear to people that when you do say yes to someone else, you are saying no to your yourself. Make that a conscious choice. hundred percent. You can get your family on board with this. And obviously, once again, it's going to take some training for lack of a better way of putting it. So my children, they are nine and 11. So the tween years. And I have this little piece of paper, except A4, like a, a, Okay. a big A4 sign outside my office that literally says yes and no. And I turn it on the, it's just on the floor. It's, on, it's not, you know, you know, and if it says no, they can't come in unless There's blood or bone, like, you know, an actual emergency. Like right now I'm recording this with you. I can't have them busting in about whatever it is they have going on. Right. When you first start this, because people say to me, I can't do this, I've got kids. I'm like, I've been doing this with my kids since they were four and six for Mm shorter periods then because obviously they didn't have the cognizant to understand what they do now. But I remember first explaining it and I, I thought they got it and I said, don't interrupt me unless it's important. And they're like, okay, yeah, yeah. I failed to define what important meant. So here I am, I'm starting to write a blog post and typing away. My daughter comes busting in. I'm like, is it important? She's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, what is it? I can fit 27 blueberries in my mouth. And I'm like, we have a very different definition of what important means. So I think sometimes people say to me, oh, I tried to set boundaries. I tried. It's like, but we use words without seeing, does the other people understand it? Like another Yes. thing too, I never ask my husband anything if he's on his Xbox. If he's Mm -hmm. gaming, he would say yes to me booking us a world cruise tomorrow. He's not paying any attention. Yes. And then later on, I get all mad at him. Like, why didn't you sweep the porch? What do you mean? I asked you to do it. When? When he was watching his Xbox. He's, you know, 
whatever. So make sure that you have the person's full attention and make sure yeah. not not in a condescending way, like repeat that back to me, but like, okay, so what's some examples of important? Or if you know, because failure to communicate, maybe it's because I work with an international audience, but so often we say stuff and the other person doesn't want to appear dumb or you think they get it. And then later on they give you something and you're like, yeah, we've had a total failure to communicate here. So yeah. often boundary mishaps are simply that. And communication is huge because I have clients who say, well, I want to be respected. And I'm like, well, what does that look like? I don't, I don't know what that means. Respect to you might mean X and to me it means Y. So how is this other person you're struggling with know what it is what you consider respectful so it's be but be clear be use clear language don't be vague and that will help them understand and minimize their interpretation of what you're saying well a hundred percent like respectful such a great example so i went to japan when i was a teenager in australia we don't sniff like that's considered disrespectful you would get a handkerchief or a tissue or something and blow your nose Okay. Over there, blowing your nose in public is rude. And whenever we went anywhere, I was like, why is everyone staring at me? Because I tend to get allergies. And I was like, oh, that is the height of disrespect. Or even you know, how you hold your cutlery or when you go into a house, like having your shoes okay. off or shoes on, that can be cultural but also can be individual. Like for me, yes. if you're meeting me and, and we're meeting at one, I expect you there at one, not 10 past, not 15 minutes past, right. not half an hour. And if you're not going to be there at one, I expect a text message okay. to say I'm running late because right. that only takes a second. Whereas other people, like my sister, I love her dearly. This is another sister. I've got three. She's, if she said I'll meet you at one-ish, she'd say this. She'll say one-ish. So I've, I've learned, no, 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 not one-ish, one. one. Because one-ish to her can mean any time up to half past two. I'm fuming. And she's like, oh, I said one-ish. <laughs> yes, clarity, clarity. Now, you also talk about on your website about people pleasing being enabling. Go for it. It's not going to win me any favors. Some people are going to listen to this and going to turn it off immediately. You're going to be like, I can't stand you. And that's okay. When I first heard this, I didn't like it either. That's okay. They've already turned off to me when I talk to them. So. <laughs> When I was working with my coach before I became the note coach and I was on my journey that I don't like, but anyway, I my coach said to me once that people pleasing was just as manipulative. Oh, this is enabling, but we'll get to that as narcissism. It's just that one was covert and one was overt. And I was like, no, no, no. I actually think I left that session. I think I was like, I'm going to talk to you. Um, <laughs> but it was like, because you want people to like you. So you mm -hmm. want people to like you by doing things that they want to do and always saying yes and always being nice and always being this. But do they really like you or do they like the version of you that you've That's put good. forward? And leading this into enabling, it's an easy example with kids because, you know, they are younger and not everyone has kids, but we've all been a kid. My... Well, there was one night where my daughter had a project that she came to me at 10 o'clock. So she should have been asleep. I was just getting ready to bed. I was literally putting my PJs on, pajamas. And she's crying because she had a project due. And I was like, when? And she's like, tomorrow. I was like, what is it? I've got to build a diorama. And I'm like, you got to be kidding. Had I been like, okay, Glenn, well, you know, my daughter, don't worry about me going to bed. Let's stay up to midnight building this diorama. Right. I'm not. I'm not helping her. I'm enabling right. her to not learn that she time management and project management. And also she's in primary school. It's not that big of a deal if she gets a bad grade. Like it's never fun, but I think sometimes we we don't want people to have the repercussions of their own actions. So we step in as this saviour, but we're enabling them to next time. If I'd done that next time, do you think she would have been like, so now when she gets a project, the second she gets it, like she's got a project, this roller skating thing I was telling you about earlier, that's a school. They're going to do a passion project. Every day after school, we've been out in the laneway with her practicing and taking little recordings. So this is legitimate rather than the day before the project's due, getting her to change clothes five times so we can <laughs> record. It's like, no, no, I am not available for this. So when we step in 
to you know drive them to the airport or take them to the netball game or do their project or whatever it is we're actually enabling their not being organized and then taking it on as their own you are preaching to the choir because that's I also teach that with my clients that when you try to protect people from the consequences of their choices you inhibit them from learning and so what they get from that is that they don't have to take responsibility for what they're responsible for so I totally get that and I also agree that people pleasing um is a control issue because if you're behaving in a way to get a specific outcome then you're manipulating them by your actions in order to get them to like or approve of you then yeah that's tough that's tough to swallow for people who think that they are just being nice like you said yet harboring that resentment inside it it's a manipulation and it 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 hurts everyone involved. So we preach to the choir. Thank you for, for saying that. But also too, I suppose it, it can kind of feel a little safer as in if I'm not showing the true me and I am rejected or people don't like that, then they just liked the front that I put on, not me. So it's kind of like a more safe thing. Whereas if I'm really honest and blunt and I am very blunt and direct sure. and people don't like it, it's like, oh, wow, they don't like me. Whereas if they don't like the version of me that I put on, the mask, they said they wanted that and they changed their mind. It's on them. You can kind of absolve yourself of that. There right. are just going to be people who don't like you. Like that's, it It hurts, it stings. But think about it. Do you like everyone? No. And it's okay. <laughs> so, it, it's, it's okay. okay. Yeah, you can't please everyone and I don't even want to. <laughs> yeah, like I look at some, I, I, I'm not the one who'd be in the comments or whatever, like I just tend to stay away from all that. But I just look at some stuff and I'm like, this is not for me. Next. Yes. <laughs> yes. Rather than getting all hung up in how you should change this so that I, you know, if you do this, I would like you. And it's like, well, instead of telling someone how they should be so I can be with them, couldn't I just go find where I want to be or create the space that I want to be in? Like that just seems like a lot less work to me. It is a lot less work. It really is a lot less work. Um, might be uncomfortable, though it's a lot less work and it's way more fulfilling. Because then you don't need to work out which version of you you are today. Like yeah. the biggest thing for me since becoming the nope coach and just speaking my mind and realizing that some people aren't going to like me and, yes, that still stings, is I don't need to remember which story or which version or you know I, I like this today it's like actually I don't like Japanese animation or I don't like horror movies I love that you love them go see it have fun yes but if you want to see something with me let's let's watch a really bad romantic comedy you might be like Suzanne I can't stand that that's okay but like finding a middle ground I think sometimes we we kind of have this unknown unspoken checks and balances in our head like I'll go watch the horror movie with you and then you can come watch the rom-com with me I can't stand horror movies and you can't stand rom-coms and nobody's comfortable in this situation. Right. Whereas instead it's like, what do we want to do today? We want to go to the movies. What's showing. And it's funny, my husband and I like this. We have very little overlap in the things that we like. And my friends, my family, we've been together 20 years. Like we don't understand how you two work because you have so few common interests, but I'm like, but we, when we do, we do. And we, and we're not afraid to say, or start watching it and go, this is more of a you thing, what else is there, rather than suffering through something and then going, now it's my turn to choose the movie. Like if that works for you, you do you. But right. I can't stand watching something that I can't stand just to please someone else. It's just, just no from me. <laughs> so saying yes to yourself is no to what you're uncomfortable with or what you don't like. Yeah. Okay. And, and also saying to them, like, I love that you love it. And I think sometimes people are afraid that if they voice something, then they're worried that's a condemnation of the other person. Right. My husband loves Japanese animation. I love that he loves it. I don't love it. I will say, hey, there's a new something. Like I'll keep on trend with it or I'll, you know, let him know. And it's funny, my son also loves it. So they're kind of into it together and they have their little click. And my daughter also loves romantic comedy. So we have our little click. So sometimes okay. we'll have a family day at the movies and they'll see something and we'll see something else and everybody, and then we'll come together for a meal. Okay. So I think you voicing, 
it, it, you don't have to. I think the social media, we put down and we negate and we get all trolly. And it's like, you can love that. I love that you love that. I don't love that. <laughs> That's just the end. And then finding common interests with people. Like if you want to go to a restaurant, if the only reason you're going is for the food, like you're not as in you're going with friends, like as a catch up, that should kind of be a sign. Like it's like, what am I actually going to this thing for? I want to catch up with you. What we do is second. Right. Okay. Okay. Makes total sense to me. Now, um, boundaries is my favorite topic. And I actually see boundaries as the foundation of health and happiness. And I could talk about it for days. <laughs> Unfortunately, neither of us has that kind of time or patience, probably. Um, <laughs> so in with your experience, personal and professional, and all of your knowledge, um, especially in the different areas of your expertise, can you wrap up people pleasing? What's the one nugget, one takeaway you want the audience to have? I, I the biggest thing that comes to mind with that is is please yourself. Like self first isn't selfish. When you are happy, when you're enlivened, like when you're around someone who is passionate about what they're doing or is excited about what they're doing, they are vibrant. You can see without words, their energy, their, I don't know, I'm not woo, but aura, there's something about them that's just like, I want to be near them. And when you are instead putting a bushel on, like they're dimming that because like, I don't know if they'll like that. And it's it's very like juvenile. It's like, you know, when you're at school right. and you're like, am I allowed to like that band? Is that band cool? And it's like, I don't mind. Let your freak flag fly is what I'm saying, basically. And then there will be people who don't like that, and that's okay, but there will be people who love that, and you'll have so much deeper connection and fun and joy than putting on a, a, a mask to be something that's kind of a watered-down version of you. There's a quote. It's horrible, but I kind of love it. It's like I'm going to butcher it. I can't remember it offhand, but it's like I will no longer water myself down for others. They can go ahead and choke. <laughs> I just love that because it's just be you. And yeah. trust that the people who are meant to be in your inner circle, connect with you, will find you and they will love you even more. And the people who kind of, eh, it frees them up to go and find their version of that. Yes. Yes. Okay. Please yourself first. Mm. Okay. Thank you for that. Now, do you have any um, special programs um, or or anything that you are working on with clients that you want to share? I have a, I've got a, what's called a building boundaries bundle. So it's $50 Australian. I'm happy to give it to your listeners for free. I can give you a um, coupon code, Glenn Alex. I'll give you the link to put in the chat, in, in the show notes. But okay. basically for anyone listening, suzannekohlberg.com forward slash BBB, because try saying building boundaries bundle three times fast. If you put the code in Glenn Alex, you can grab that for free. I 100% believe in marketing transparency. So it will literally just give you that course and then there's also a link there if you want to get my newsletters. Because one of my personal peeves is if I sign up for a freebie and then I can just never get away from the person. <laughs> so I do send emails and stuff as well, but that doesn't automatically sign you up to my list. So if you're wanting to like get started with boundaries, check that out. Otherwise, uh, I have my own podcast called The Nope Coach. And okay. best place to check that because it's got 400 and something episodes. So you could look at that and be daunted. If you find it on YouTube, so look up Suzanne Kohlberg on YouTube. You can look it up by playlist. And I just love that. So you can go like, I just want to look at the boundaries playlist or I just want to look at the people pleasing okay. playlist. Like there's playlists of okay. all the topic I do. Okay, excellent. Excellent. Um, and if someone has a question for you? Best place, you want them to my website. If you go suzannekohlberg.com forward slash contact, uh, you should just go there anyway because my website is super fun and my contact page is the funnest one I've ever seen because if it's not fun, I don't do it. Um, and send me a message. I will write back to you. I respond to everyone. I don't use social media. So although I am on the platforms, I don't check my DMs. I can't stand DMs. They drive me crazy. But in contact okay. form on my website, you got me. Okay, excellent, excellent. Suzanne, thank you so much for your time and sharing your experience and your humor and your wisdom and for translating. <laughs> 
<laughs> I speak two languages, English, yes, like yes. Australian English and American English, and maybe UK English. I could say I'm multilingual in English. Yes, you are. You are. <laughs> Thank you for having me. You are welcome. You take care. You too. Okay. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of The Glen Alex Show. We hope you learn that people pleasing is a poor emotional boundary and causes you more harm than good. Please like, subscribe, and share. Refresh your spirit with a nourishing thought. Please allow me to leave you with this nourishing thought. Creative director Dinkor Kalotra said, a healthy relationship will never require you to sacrifice your friends, your dreams, or your dignity. Supporting loved ones and other human beings in need is admirable, noble, maybe even heroic. For example, you're available to babysit your nephew so his mother can go on a job interview. You donate food and clothing to the homeless shelter because you can afford to. You leave work to pick up prescriptions for your mother because her illness has her confined to bed. All of these are healthy and caring acts for your loved ones, and they fulfill the human need for giving. And I applaud you. However, healthy giving becomes unhealthy with people-pleasing which is an, a poor emotional boundary that presents as not speaking up for yourself when appropriate and going against your better judgment and needs to make someone else happy. The goal of people-pleasing is to get love and or approval. So the strategy is to give in, to keep someone from being mad at you or to make someone like you. This requires controlling other people's emotions, reactions, and choices. Yes, I see people-pleasing as a control issue based on poor boundaries. And people-pleasing is very unrealistic because you don't have control over other people's emotions, reactions, or choices. You only control what you think, feel, do, and say. In fact, what typically happens with people pleasing is the person you're giving into uses your poor boundaries against you to continue getting what they want from you without giving back. And that often leads to anxiety and depression because your realistic needs go unmet and these individuals just continue to demand more and more from you without giving you the love, approval, respect, that you see. So you can learn how to set and maintain healthy boundaries on every level. So you can live fully and experience authentic love and joy. To learn more about people pleasing and healthy boundaries, please visit glennalex.com and order your copy of my three time award winning book and book your free consultation with me to address your boundary issues. Then tune into the next episode of the Glenn Alex Show. And until next time, be well.